Welcome back to Jolie Farms in Ecuador. Thanks for joining us today. I'm with my good friend, Sue. Sue, how are you today? Thanks for joining us. I'm great. So great to Glad be Glad you're here. <laughs> Sue has been a friend for quite a while since we've lived here. Sue, can you tell our viewers where you're from originally? Sure. Yeah. <clears throat> I pretty much grew up in Oregon. Spent my uh, childhood summers in Montana, where my uh, dad, who was a school teacher, worked for the um, Glacier National Park Service. So I fell in love with the mountains, with hiking, nature, and I've uh, carried that um, tradition on, I guess, throughout my life. So when I came to Ecuador, I um, was in a little choir, actually, with some friends that said, hey, we should go out hiking. You know, there's a lot of nice trails here. So we started hiking once a week. We said, we just got to do this. And um, a couple people left. Um, I remained here. And we used to post our hikes on uh, Facebook until uh, Vilka Hikers until the um, lockdown came and then no more gathering supposedly. We waited two months and then started meeting at my house and got taxis to come and take us out places. So uh, <clears throat> it's been about nine years now hiking. Wow. So maybe a couple have to be canceled a year due to rain. Uh, a full day of rain is a rare thing here, but when it happens, it's, everything's socked in so you can't see much. And so we've ended up over this time just going every direction around Vilcabamba as far as maybe 50, uh, well, 30, 40 miles away. So yeah, some of the little pueblos and villages around Vilcabamba, I mean, Canara, Tumia Numa, you've been out there. Yes. Um, uh, Masana Maca, mm -hmm. um, where else? San Pedro, obviously, and Zacapo and... Yeah, yeah, we've been out Alto. to Palmyra area. Palmyra. Um, we've been all the way out to Perianuma. Perianuma. And um, just up into uh, Podocarpus, you know, from heading out to Loja. Now you realize there. I have to uh, type all this and translate it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll try to keep it simple. The words here are not easy to spell. <laughs> Some of these words are tough, yeah. Uh -huh. So, uh, so nine years you've been here in Ecuador? Yes. Wow, that's fantastic. Yes. Yeah, been here three longer than us. Yes. Yeah. Well, I relish every day. It's just um, a wonderful lifestyle. It's um, just the natural health, na nature, beauty. It's just easier to be more serene and spiritual and just enjoy life in a whole different way. So, yeah, it's I really uh, love it. muy tranquilo. It's the word tranquilo just almost describes it all, but not quite, because it's just so um, different here. It's just mm -hmm. life slows down. Things mm -hmm. are easier in a way, you know. Yes, yes. That's what I was looking for. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. so I like to live vicariously through Sue and her group. Um, <laughs> I can't do these hikes that they do because of my health. But my gosh, they go to some beautiful places. And, of course, I have some pictures up here where you see some of that beauty. But um, I, I so desperately would like to go along with my camera and shoot photos. Mm -hmm. And and a couple of your, you and your hikers are getting pretty good behind the camera. I'm impressed. Yeah, yeah. And the cameras, I have to say, are getting better quality. I just use my little phone. Everybody just uses a phone. It's amazing. Yeah. It's amazing. I, <clears throat> I use, uh, for a long time, we shot all of our YouTube videos on this little Poco F3 right here. Mm -hmm. You see how many times I've dropped it already. <laughs> and this has some of the best 4K video wow. and 4K photos. I mean, the, the quality is unbelievable. Yeah. It's a $300 phone. It's just great. Yeah. It's incredible. So we do like some technologies. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Some of it's handy. Yeah. So, um, Sue, what kind of people do you think are, are most likely to join you? I mean, obviously hikers, but yeah, you know, um, it's been fun just to, um, it appeals to the person that just wants to get out and get a good workout, some exercise, fresh air, and see something beautiful. And so, um, and tell you the truth, walking and talking is just as fun as anything else. So people come to town, it's a great way a friend invites them, and all of a sudden they meet a whole group of people that um, all have in common that they love the outdoors and hiking and enjoying nature that way. So um, I would say that uh, some of our hikes are pretty strenuous. So I tell people that, um, especially if they're new here, to get used to the altitude, see how your knees and lungs and everything are functioning. 
Uh, the first Tuesday of the month, we have a downhill hike or flat. So uh, there's a lot of downhill. If the taxi takes us up, um, and sometimes that hurts people's knees. It bugs them a little bit, but uh, it's so fun to get the view without having to hike up to it and then just see views the whole way down. There's a number of hikes like that or river walks. So um, we get more people on that first Tuesday of the month that want to get out. It's a great way to get started, so, break yourself in a little bit. Yes, yes. So it's a great way for people to get to know new people and, and learn about the community, I think. It sure is. It yeah. sure is. One guy even found a piece of property for sale on one of our hikes. There you and go. And he's building and thrilled to be there. So it's a good way to survey the area and the train. So who's not welcome in your group? Oh. <laughs> Is that uh, a good way to put it? Is yeah. there anybody that's not welcome? No complainers. <laughs> yeah, no complainers. <laughs> so it's some of, I always tell people, know your limits. And a lot of the hikes, we come back the same way. And people say, I'll just rest here for a while and have some nature time. And we'll come and pick them up on the way back. So that works well. So, you know, I do send out an email saying a little bit about the hike. If it's round trip, then we're all committed to doing the whole thing together. But um, some of them, if they're local, people say, hey, I, I know how to get back. I've had enough. I'm, I'm going. So it's a very um, casual group as far as, you know, I'm concerned that, you know, we count everybody and everybody makes it back. And uh, we have spots where we wait and let people catch up. So, um, yeah, sometimes children. Uh, we've had some that are just amazingly gung-ho. I mean, they want to go, go, go and other kids get bored and then they start crying and <laughs> then they, they don't want to, they want to sit down, not move anymore. That's happened. So, you know, we just, uh, parents usually can be a good gauge of, <clears throat> of their kids' um, athletic abilities. So, cause most of our hikes are um, four to uh, six miles long. The four mile ones are usually cause when you're going up something steep, it's a lot slower. So we're usually back in town around two-ish, two or three, and still have the rest of the day to relax and enjoy the day. And I would say, you know, if you're new and, and you're worried about your ability to keep up, start by walking around Vilcabamba itself. Yes. And spend, you know, a couple hours a day just walking around the, the uh, Pueblo, up and down mm -hmm. the streets there is uh, sometimes a challenge when you're new. Yes, yeah, I always say if you want to test yourself, uh, our beloved Mandango uh, rock feature here in town, the Sleeping Warrior. Uh, you can get if you can get up to the cross that they have um, up there in like an hour. You're probably you know going to do just fine because that tests you out on the steep and downhills. You know how you feel balance wise and how your lungs are doing and knees and all that. So uh, that's a good way to kind of initiate initiate yourself to Vilcabamba is go up to <clears throat> Mandango where you see just incredible view of the valley. So uh, would you say you have a lot of 50 somethings in the group? Oh yeah, yeah. Um, we have, one of my friends is 83. Now he's wow. one of these people that's always been into health and it shows. Yeah. He really uh, takes good care of himself and you'd never guess he was past 60. Wow. <laughs> So if you're not in shape now, get in shape <laughs> Yeah, and uh, make it easier when you get here. Yeah. You know, so many people have said their um, whole body health improved just coming here. It's fresher air, it's fresher water and a cleaner lifestyle and simple foods. So, you know, my, my daughter-in-law said on my last visit to Texas, well, it seemed like you're doing a whole lot worse since you moved there. And I'm like, Oh, no, 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 I'd already be dead if I stayed in Texas. Um, I'm doing a whole lot better here. Yeah. Uh, it sometimes doesn't seem like that, but the elevation does get to me. And during this fire scare we've had for the last couple of days, you know, in the middle of the night, I'm hiking up and down our property with 30, 40 pounds worth of water hose, trying to run up these sidewalks. And yeah, it, it played a, its role on me, definitely. Amazing what a little adrenaline will do for your yeah, energy. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Wow. Exactly. So, yeah, getting in the shape is of utmost importance and doing it properly and not just going out and hurting your knees the first time, mm -hmm. you know, doing something ridiculous. Yeah. 
So you might see some of our videos on her Facebook page, the Vilka Hikers Facebook page, but only because that's my way of trying to contribute to the Vilka Hiker community since I can't go myself. Mm, okay. And Sue does a marvelous job at contributing to this community. Everybody in this community contributes mm -hmm. something. Yeah, it's a very reciprocal. You know, you just feel like people are so generous and nice to you. You just want to give. So, yeah. And those that don't usually don't last in this area because they just don't seem to want to be here. <laughs> yeah, they'll find things to criticize and not be happy about. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and there's so much here to, to see and do. This is one of those things that we've talked about before, the hiking groups. And um, is, is there's more than one, yeah? Isn't there? You know, people do tours. So there's some people that will charge and they'll do a, a more inclusive, you know, um, kind of a tour where you go <clears throat> see more or do more. Maybe they provide lunch or something. Like... Um, you guys went to the windmills in Loja, didn't you? Yes, yeah. yeah. We paid a lot of times. So not a lot, but a fair amount of times. We'll get a guide because um, either we're going through private property, and so they sort of um, get all the permissions to go through gates and barbed wire fences and um, just actually show us where to go because sometimes you get in these areas and it's just so vast and you don't want to get lost, yeah. which uh, you have to be careful. My big suggestion, too, and I think I've mentioned this before, is don't just cross a fence and walk onto somebody's property without permission. That's just kind of bad etiquette. And uh, there are places where you're going to be on private property by accident. That's one thing. But, you know, climbing over someone's fence and you don't know who they are or anything else, um, make sure you know where you're going. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know, people have uh, asked me, well, why don't you put together a hiking book? Well, a lot of the property here is private. And there is a, kind of a uh, free access rule where if somebody needs to get from one side of a person's property because they're going somewhere else over there, that people can walk through. Obviously, if somebody's there, we ask permission. And we either get, um, usually we get the response, wow, what are you doing way up here? And people are curious <laughs> about us and will show us around their place. It's delightful. Other times, uh, we'll get a shout, private property, don't come. And, of course, you know, that's fine. But um, People are we, all different. Yeah, because these aren't National Park Service trails. They're usually cow or goat trails, a lot of them. You see the herringbone patterns on the side. And uh, so, you know, there's trails, and then there's places we just say, let's go there and find our way up. So a lot of the discoveries of trails around here has just been from one peak we can see trails on the, another peak and say hey let's see if we can get over there so it's been a fun explore I have to say some of our hikes are like more like ropes courses I say but you don't have to pay five hundred dollars for it or whatever they <laughs> charge we just have to figure out how to get down this one hairy spot or over these uh, barbed wire fences and so it's um, it's really a great adventure for <clears throat> So people that like that kind of thing will love our hikes. <laughs> All right. So if you folks have questions about Vilka Hikers, you can look on Facebook and it's Vilka Hikers. Yes. V-I-L-C-A Hikers. Yeah. And we just approve people just to make sure we don't get people coming in to <clears throat> um, sell things or whatever and just to keep it for our group. So we'll just uh, answer a few questions and we'll approve you to come in. And we have hundreds of people on there that just, for whatever reason, they can't hike, but they love seeing where we go and knowing what's here. Like when I joined, Sue saw my request and was like, oh, gosh, what do we do with this guy? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, it's Joe. <laughs> I, I get a lot of friend requests on our Jolie Farms page, and we really don't uh, accept friends on there. Um, so don't get your feelings hurt. But um, I look at some of these friend requests, and there are these, let me just say, women from other countries posing with selfies. Yeah, no, mm. <laughs> not doing it. Mm -hmm. So we've kind of eliminated the friends on the Jolie Farms webpage. You can follow us, and uh, that's always mm. good there. My personal page, I'll accept friends, but I've, I've quit accepting friends as are not people I know or, you know, friends of good friends. Yeah. Um, just because I'm overwhelmed with this <laughs> me too. spam, you know. Yeah. So don't get your feelings hurt. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I just know it's something we have to do to try to stay safe. I get stuff, obviously, on our YouTube page as well, YouTube channel. 
And so we got to try to protect ourselves and not uh, get involved in all that. And so uh, it's just a great way to keep the stress out of your life. Mm -hmm. Yes, just the no button, delete button works great. <laughs> We're going to keep it tranquilo here. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, well, Sue, thank you so much for joining oh, us today. Thank you, Joy. It was and a uh, again, if you have questions, reach out to Sue. Um, mm -hmm. If you reach out to us, I'm probably going to direct you to Sue, but because uh, yeah, I don't really know mm -hmm. much about the group, she knows all about it. So I uh, hope you'll come and, and visit with the group when you get here. And uh, even if you're going to be here for a week or two, um, schedule a, a hike with them and uh, get to get to know the area better. And all of the people who are on the hikes all live in you know different areas of Vilcabamba. They all have a story, and it's fun getting to know those stories. Yeah, it sure is. Great all people right. here. All right. So that's all we have for today. Ciao for now. Ciao.